What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the biggest things that wide receivers do not want to do and some of the mistakes that they want to avoid. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope we could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're an athlete, if you're a wide receiver, any position really on the football field, you need to take your recovery seriously. If you guys don't know necessarily what you should be doing, what you should be taking to properly aid with your recovery, check out that very first link in the description below for ANG Labs Whey Protein and BCAA Recovery Protein powder and recovery powder. Fellas, these are two things that you guys can take after your workouts to help you repair the broken down muscle tissue or muscle fibers from your workouts and also to repair yourself from those long days where you have multiple workouts, especially this time of the year during the season. So check out that very first link below. The BCAA powder will help you get better sleep, help you recover faster, and the protein will obviously help you maintain weight during the season. So very first link below, use promo code FIRST15 for 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started with this video. So now, now, first things first here, we are going to be talking about a false step. So that is the first thing that so many wide receivers struggle with. So I'm going to play this clip full speed. So I end up taking this false step off the line when I'm getting up into this route and into my release. So this is, we talk a lot about this front foot being used as like a prep step or a step that's a part of a release. This is not that specific case. This is like, we're just trying to take off and run. Maybe the DB's off in zone coverage, whatever it might be. And instead of you exploding up with your back foot, your front foot goes back. Now, the reason why so many wide receivers will do this is because they do not have proper foot placement with their front foot. So you see when I'm in my stance here, and I'm kind of in this stance on purpose where my shin angle is straight up and down. I'm almost kind of like sitting back into my stance. That is what causes a lot of false steps in wide receivers because they do not have enough weight onto their front leg where they can actually explode out. That is usually the main issue. So what you want to try to do to avoid this false step, you want to try to bring your knee to the middle part of your foot. So the advice that I would give myself in this specific scenario is try to lean forward forward a little bit more to where that shin angle is almost at like a 45 degree angle and that knee should be even with the middle part of your toe. That will not allow you to take that false step. But when you don't have enough weight on that front foot and you have most of your weight like kind of distributed on your back foot, that is what causes you to take that false step. And then your first step off the line is here rather than your first step off the line being here, which can script the timing on routes and can script your depth on routes. Like let's say for example, this DB is like eight yards off. He's in zone. Own. And let's say I have to run like a 12 yard curl. Usually a 12 yard curl is off of your fourth outside step, right? So you would take four outside steps and that's when you would snap down. So your first step on that to make sure that we get to 12 yards needs to be about right there. That's where your first step needs to be. But if you fall step, then your first step is here and you're running that 12 back to 10 yard curl either on the wrong step because you're pushing up to the depth or when you hit your fourth outside, you're going to be short of the distance. So make sure that we are avoiding fall steps by getting more weight on to my front leg. Let's play this thing again, full speed, fellas. Just make sure we have enough weight on the front leg to be able to explode out. Okay, so now, second thing that wide receivers want to avoid is rounding their cuts when they restack a defender. So let's play this thing full speed. So this wide receiver comes up, takes the outside release on an inside breaking route. We talk about this all the time. Now, granted, this throw could have been a lot better. It was definitely behind, but he's still not open. If you guys think that he's open right here, that's completely wrong. He's not open. That DB is right on his hip. The only play, the, the only time that this could ever work is if the quarterback throws an absolutely perfect pass. So how we can get more separation on this is not rounding it into the break, like we said. So he essentially does the right things off the line, but so many wide receivers struggle with this and they just tell that DB where they are going. So we have inside shade press coverage or man coverage, I should say. If he's in man inside shade, we already know he's trying to stop the routes like the slant, like the post, like the dig. So he wants to force everything to the outside. So as wide receiver to maintain timing with my quarterback, to make sure that I'm consistent with what I'm doing, I need to take what he gives me. I need to take the outside release because what so many wide receivers will do in this scenario is that they force the release inside. This DB will just stay square and reroute you all the way over the middle of the field, which will script spacing. And the fact that he gets hands on us is what's going to script timing with the route. So we have to take the outside release. And that's exactly what this receiver does. He bursts up with some speed. He gets him into a position where he is restacked, where this DB is trailing our back hip. Maybe he could be a little bit tighter for sure, but I want you to watch what he does at this break point. His hips and shoulders are vertical right now, but right here, he's telling him that he's running a post. That hip and that shoulder, everything turning to the inside is exactly where the DB is going to go. That DB is supposed to be watching our hips, reading our body language. So if we give away this route with my body language, not only is there really no need for a cut, the cut's going to be weak, we're not going to have any explosion, and we just don't flat out sell the route. 
Now, fellas, wide receivers at every single level do this. You look at this clip from the NFL, and then you look at clips from guys in high school, guys playing youth ball. They don't have that confidence to restack and break off of one single cut. But it's not even necessarily the confidence. It's just being able to sell the route. That's what you have to do. You have to, dick, you have to tell this DB it's a fade until it is not a fade. But if we round our routes, that is not telling him that it is a fade. So make sure, fellas, this is one of the biggest mistakes that wide receivers need to avoid. Do not round with your hips and your shoulders to the side of the break point. That will tell this DB where we're going, and he will be locked up. He's lucky that he even got maybe half a step on this. This DB essentially should be right here. That's making it very, very difficult for your QB to throw you open on this. Let's play it again full speed one more time. Again, right release, right decision. We just have to make sure we take care of this guy at the top of the route. Okay, so now... Next clip I want to talk about here is from Allen Robinson. So Allen Robinson is going to be running this goal line fade, but I want to talk to you guys about not getting skinny on your routes. That is one of the biggest mistakes that wide receivers will make. In every single situation, is they do not know how to get skinny to be a quarterback-friendly route runner or to run a quarterback-friendly route. So let's play this full speed. So he comes off the ball. He does this great kind of one-two release, sells to the inside, but he goes very wide. Now, even on a goal line fade, fellas, we need to give my quarterback space. So if I get this DB to sit to the inside, let's say I get him to jump, he gets to he-, he hesitates to the inside, and I have to run a route like a fade. I don't want to try to run away from this DB because whether it's a fade on the five-yard line, whether it's a fade on the 50-yard line, you still have to get vertical. The QB is still trying to put the ball upfield. But if you take a very wide angle, angle like Allen Robinson does, the DB still has a better angle of recovery than we do. And again, if it's a vertical route, that DB has a better angle to get to to pretty much cut us off because he can take that 45 and get over the top and be able to make a play on the ball. So what I would say from Allen Robinson right here is when he makes this move, what he makes this guy miss is try to be a little bit tighter. Try to be tighter with his hip right here. Have a plan with your hands. Try to swat off his outside arm. Because when you guys are taking an outside release on a route, we got to know that the only arm we have to beat is the outside arm. So if I could set him up and beat that outside arm, I should have no problem getting skinny and being able to get up into the route while maintaining timing. But what Robinson does here is he attacks outside, but he just kind of fades out to the outside. That All that does is just give Ward time and gives him the angle to be able to recover. He was never beat on this. He always had us by a step. But if Allen Robinson were to be here and this DB were trailing his back hip, that sets up a throw for back shoulder because the quarterback has more space. QB could put it over the top. We just have to make sure we do my job and get skinny. That's what getting skinny means to win on this route. And now this not only applies on a fade route, this applies on every route. Like let's say for example, he had to run like a 10 yard out on the goal line. If he were to do this move, like that crossover off the line, but he takes that type of angle running towards the sideline, then he breaks to the out route, there's only about two yards of space to the sideline. He needs to get skinny. He needs to get vertical so he has more space for the quarterback to lead us and throw us open. So the main thing, fellas, that we got to avoid as a court, as a wide receiver is do not run away from contact. Make sure we get skinny so we make it a quarterback-friendly route. Let's play this thing again. Again, great job with the release. Just went a little bit wide. Needs to get skinnier to make this play happen.